Have you ever wondered how to install a dimmer switch? Let me show you. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I installed this dimmer switch into a currently existing light system. I'm gonna be installing some recessed LED lights in this room soon, so I wanna have them on a dimmer. So I made sure I got a dimmer that was specifically uh, rated for LEDs. Um, it should have a better um, ability to dim them and uh, be a little bit more smooth. But a lot of the new dimmer switches are pretty simple and straightforward. They're very similar to your standard switch. They wire up a lot uh, the same now. So um, let me show you how I did this one. And you can probably apply the same principles to almost any switch that you find in the store. And uh, let's get to it. Remember rule number one, always turn off your breaker before you do any electrical work. So on a lot of these newer light sockets and light uh, switch covers, you'll need a flathead screwdriver to kind of pop off on the bottom there. There's two little tabs that you can just pop off. And then you're always gonna need a Phillips. That way we can take off the actual plate cover. It's a few more steps than it used to be, but it's a lot cleaner, modern look. So this switch currently goes to the fan that we have in the center of the room. This switch uh, doesn't really go to anything yet because it also goes to the fan up there. I have two hot wires, it's the black and the red. Um, so you'll basically have the ability to turn the fan on or the light and then a lot of these new fans, they have a light built into them. So this switch actually controls the fan light already and I have another power up there. So I'm gonna run that power to my recessed lights. Um, that way, because it's already in the ceiling. But this switch right now currently isn't being used. It's just capped off in the ceiling. So I want to put a dimmer switch here, and then this switch will actually control the LED lights when I decide to jump that power over to the recessed lights that I install. So I don't need to mess with this one. I'm only going to have to remove this one, and this is where I'm going to put the dimmer switch. Remember, you can always use a power drill and it's a lot easier, but I'm just using the screwdriver for dramatic effect. So now that we have this open, you can see we have the black wire here or the hot wires, they call it. It's where the energy pretty much is coming from the control panel and we're gonna have it flow through this switch and the switch is gonna create a break in the power flow, allowing it to either continue or not. So I'll show you guys a little diagram I drew to kind of explain how the energy flows through these circuits. It's gonna be a little butchered, but I'm just trying to break it down as simple as I can to explain how this works and what happens if you find a red wire in one of your switches, because this wire actually has the red, or this switch actually has the red, and this one actually has the black. So I'm gonna kind of explain it so that when you see a red wire, you don't get scared and you understand what it's doing. So let me show you guys that. All right, so you wanna learn how to be an electrician. Here's a quick little crash course. You have your positive flow here to the light. It goes in and it powers your light and then it flows out. This is gonna be your black or your hot line. And this is gonna be your white or what they call the neutral or the common line. So it's just gonna be a continuous flow. So here we go, we have energy uh, power coming in from the street to the house. We have your control panel with all the breakers. And then we have our neutral or our common. And then we have our black and our hot. In this case, we have two. So they're not gonna run two blacks because that'd be confusing. You wouldn't know which one goes to which and at some point you'd get them confused. So they chose red. So we have a black and red that are tied to the circuit and then we still have our white or our neutral. The power flows through. One of them goes to the switch and continues on to our recessed lighting. The other one goes to the switch and continues on to our fan. As you see, both of them have their way out, the, the back flow, the neutral, the white wire. In this case, I wrote it in blue, but it's the same thing. Energy's flowing through 
coming to the lights and it's allowed to come back through the white, which is tied in here as a group, all the flow back out through the panel. So if you ever see a red wire, you're gonna treat it as a hot wire. It's gonna be energized. The black one is the most common one you'll always find in the house. Red just means that you probably have an additional um, hot wire on that same circuit. So in this case, this goes to the fan. This set of three is up in the ceiling of the house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna branch the black wire over to my recess lights and that way I can have this switch right here control my recess lights. This one already goes to the fan and I'll open up the wall and show you how one has red and the other one has black. And even though I know I butchered it, this is pretty much how the energy is flowing. It's flowing in, switch allows it to continue and then it flows out. And the same thing with this black wire, which is one you're most commonly gonna find, flows into the switch, it allows it to continue, and then it's gonna flow back. Black and red are energized. The white wire is gonna be your neutral, and it's gonna be the flow out. So a lot of times you'll find that just kind of tied up inside the box, and for these switches, you'll see the break for that hotline. So hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Hopefully you could follow me as I explained it. I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but um, think of it as a circle and think of this switch being that break and not allowing that energy to flow. And then when you turn it on, it allows it to continue through to your fixture and power your fixture. Um, I'll actually open this up just to kind of show you that this one actually has the red and this one has the black and how that works. And I just don't want anybody to be scared when they see a red wire and they don't know what to do because that's not written on the back of the switch or it's not written um, on the direction somewhere. You're always gonna treat the red wire as a hot wire. You're gonna treat it just like a black wire. So even if the switch says this is where the black goes and all you have is a red, you're gonna treat that the same thing. The red is gonna be hot, the black is hot. I'll show you how that's also wired in on here. As you can see, the red wire comes in here and then we have the black wire that continues up. The only reason that we have the red here is because this black and red are both coming from the control panel. And um, again, there, there are two hot wires on one circuit. Just like I drew it, you know, you got your black and red coming from the control panel and then you have the energy flowing to two different fixtures off of one circuit. So when we're gonna take these wires out and replace it with the dimmer switch, there's a couple different ways that we can actually release these wires. There's these little slots right here that, you're, that you can insert something uh, small enough. I like to use this little screwdriver that I keep around or every once in a while if I can't find it, I'll use this sharp tool right here and kind of punch it in there. But you can push it in there and it will actually release the wire. That's why I use this screwdriver. It's a little bit easier, but it releases the bite on that wire in there and it'll actually let you pull it out. So there's no need to actually cut it off. But that is another option that you can do. You can actually just snip these off if you want to, it's a lot faster. But just to kind of show you guys how that works, I don't know if you can see it, but there's little bite marks on there. You just insert it into those two little holes and then these are the release, the release tabs. So. You also always still have the option to wire it in like that and just tighten down the screws. But a lot of the new um, switches that you'll find will have the hole or the traditional um, screw and anchor here on the side. So, but these are really fast. You can just punch it in there and then usually you're still gonna have to screw in your ground and uh, you'll, be, you'll be ready to go. So let's disconnect our ground. It's always good to have a pair of needle nose pliers around to help you manipulate these, these wires. So in this box here, who needs instructions, right? You have your uh, two different plate covers in case you want to, you know, you maybe have an older home and you have that, I don't know, tan look, but right now I have white and everything. So they already have the white one on there. 
So now we have our dimmer switch, has our ground, and then it basically has our in and our out. It's gonna continue the flow. And then right here, it has a little label that says if you wanna use this for a three-way switch, but this isn't gonna be a three-way circuit. But at least this dimmer switch has the option to be used on a three-way uh, light circuit. So it kinda has a dual purpose. But in this case, we're just gonna have our continuous flow. Very similar to these two here. It's just gonna basically allow the energy to continue through. What I'll do is I'll um, just put this in here. This one doesn't have the option to just push the wires in. So we'll just wire it in here on the side. And like I said, you can use these needle nose pliers to help you kind of manipulate that however you'd like. And that's how easy it is. So you turn it on, it allows the energy to flow through it. And um, this actually will allow you to control how much is actually flowing through it while it's on. But pretty easy, very simple. And like I said, all these switches are doing are they're just creating a break in the flow of energy. There's not too much to them. Now, since the power is off, don't be afraid to move these wires around a little bit. They're always gonna fight you a little bit when you're trying to put them in. Don't put any really hard kinks into the wires. But again, don't be afraid to kind of push it back and set that switch right where you want it. So again, for a dramatic effect, I will go ahead and do this by hand. So whenever you're replacing a switch and you have a plate like this, and you might uh, be needing to adjust your new switch a little bit so that the plate fits correctly. I always say just leave the screws on it a little bit loose and that way you can adjust it to where it fits the way you'd like inside uh, the plate cover. And then you can go ahead and just tighten these down where, you, where, where it currently sits. So once you have your new switch adjusted to where the plate cover fits nice and everything looks square, you're ready to go ahead and just put it back on the same way it came off. Who would have thought it would be so easy, right? Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, I hope you liked the video. All you need is some basic tools, a flathead, a Phillips, maybe uh, some needle nose pliers. And then I showed you guys how I used that small little screwdriver to actually push the release button in there so I could actually pull the wires out. Uh, but you could always just cut it and strip it back. You're only gonna need about you know three quarters of an inch, half an inch of wire. So it's really easy. It's something you can definitely do yourself. Um, I highly recommend it especially if you're gonna be using some of those new light bulbs or those new LED light systems, you can save a lot of money, not only by switching over to LED, but you can also save money if you put a dimmer switch there and you can actually control how much light you want and when you want it. Maybe you don't want the lights on full blast all the time and you could always lower it a little bit and save. Um, it's really nice, really easy and simple to do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video again and I'm gonna be making some more like this. Keep an eye out for them in the future. I'm gonna show you guys how I wire my three-way switches and some plugs that I'm gonna be installing in the garage. So stay tuned for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you on the next one.